Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Excel Club and welcome to today's presentation on the future of Excel. This presentation is part one of three presentations which is further detailed in the blog. I'll put a link below the video for those that are watching this on YouTube so you can hop over and you can check out the blog post that relates to all of this. So we're talking about the future of Excel and we're talking about Excel Power Tools. We're talking about Power Pivot, we're talking about Power Query, and we're talking about Power View. All these business intelligence tools that have been packaged into Excel is now making Excel an awful lot more powerful. In today's demonstration, we are going to look at the first Power Tool, which is Power Pivot. This was introduced in 2010 as an add-in. So if you're using Excel 2010, you're going to need to head over to the Microsoft website and download it. Now it's free, so you don't need to worry about payment or licenses. In later versions of Excel, it's part of the standard package. Now in this demonstration, we're going to look at creating a standard pivot table. When you create standard pivot tables, it's often necessary to perform several lookups to pull data from other tables into the one table. Now, this can be very heavy on resources, especially if you have large sets of data. So it's basically a limitation of standard power pivot tables. Now I know we all think pivot tables are awesome, but there are limitations. Another limitation is that once you create a standard pivot table, you don't have the option to move the data from the pivot table into different places on your workbook. With Power Pivot, both of these limitations have been removed. You no longer need to carry out VLOOKUPs to add the data into one table as Power Pivot will allow you to pivot the data from multiple tables. And with Power Pivot, you can also remove the limitation that there is there for the formatting of the data and moving the data around. So let's hop into Excel and take a look at our example. Here we are now in Excel and what we're going to look at first is setting up a normal pivot table. Now when we set up this normal pivot table, I'm going to show you the limitations that there are when you're using standard pivot tables in Excel. So we have three tables of data and I have each of these tables set up as an actual table. So that means when I'm doing formulas, the formula will automatically populate the column and it'll pull in table references rather than cell references. So we have a sales table and we've got an invoice number, dispatch note number, date, the net amount, sales tax gross and we also have a sales rep. We have a dispatch table and on our dispatch table we've got the dispatch note number, the date and the product cost. And we also have a regions table that has the regions. Now what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to pivot all of this data based on the regions. And we also from the dispatch page want to bring in the product cost because this is our cost of sales. And if we bring that in, we'd be able to calculate our actual profit. But before we even begin to build our first pivot table, we come across the first limitation. And that limitation is the fact that with standard pivot tables, all of your data must be in the one table. So before you can even build a standard pivot table, you need to know lookups to be able to pull data into the table. Let's have a look at pulling in some data. So we put in our lookup formula. We're going to look up our sales rep. We're going to look it up in our regions table. And then we're going to select column number two, and we are going to take an exact match. Now, because I have this set up as a table, the entire column automatically updated. So I can now call this region, if I can spell. And we now have our region within the table. The next thing we want to pull in is we want to pull in from our dispatch page is our product cost. And we have a similar field on both tables. We have the dispatch note number on both tables. So we can use that as our lookup. So we'll do our VLOOKUP and we look up our dispatch note value. And we will go to dispatches and we will look it up in our dispatch table. And we're going to take our third column and we're going to take an exact match. And now we've also pulled in our cost of sales. 
So I'll rename that cost of sales. Now that we have all of our data in our one table, we can now set up a pivot table. So to go and set up a pivot table, you go to insert and we'll just take a blank table and we will select a blank worksheet. And now what we can do is we can take our region and we could take our net sales and we could look at our net sales per region. Now region wasn't originally in the initial table, only sales rep was in the initial table. So we were able to pivot this data. Now we can also bring in our cost of sales now into the same table. Let's remove out the actual sales. So we can also bring in the cost of sales. Let's take out our cost of sales for the moment and let's also take out our region. And let's put in our net sales and now let's put in our cost of sales. Now what we want to do now is actually calculate our profit. And we can do this by adding in a calculated field. And a calculated field will allow you to do calculations on fields of data in your pivot table. We will call this profit. And what we will do is take our net sales and we'll insert that field. And we will take away our cost of sales and we will be left with our profit. Now a new field has come up with profit. Now we are pivoting and calculating our profit based on data from three different tables. But to do this at the start, what we had to do is we had to do lookups to get the data into the one table in the first place. Now I'm gonna just change this around for a second and I'm going to put my values like this. Now I've done a slight bit of formatting on these values, but what I want to show you is if we wanted to change this pivot table now, so now we have these values, but let's say we wanted to re-lay out this pivot table in a different way. We can't, we can't cut, copy or paste, so we're stuck with the format that we're given. Now we do have a design ribbon and you can use your design ribbon in your pivot tables and you can change things such as the row headers and the column headers, banded rows and banded columns. You can also update your subtotals and your grand totals. But really you can't get the layout that you want with a pivot table. Now there's also the problem that if you try and use a formula, a value from a pivot table in a formula, and then you try and copy the formula down. The formula doesn't actually copy down because we have this get pivot thing going on. Now you can turn off that get pivot thing, but it is another limitation of standard pivot tables. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hop over and we're gonna show you the first of the power tools. The first power tool is Power Pivot. For the Power Pivot example, we're going to start with the same data set. We have sales, the exact same sales table. We've got dispatch and we've got region. But we've added something else as well. We've added in the overheads and the overheads are there for two months of 2018. Now what we will note the difference here is that the overheads are based on a monthly basis. So the granularity is particularly different to that of sales and to the dispatches. Now with a normal pivot table, you could, you'd find something like that rather difficult. But with Power Pivot, it's actually quite easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a Power Pivot model. And I'm going to show you how quickly you can do the same steps as what we did earlier on using a standard pivot table. Because these are all tables within the same workbook. This example is actually rather simple, but Power Pivot has an awful lot more power than what I'm going to show you now, and I'll show you some more of the power later on. To add data to a pivot table, all you have to do is press Add to Data Model from your Power Pivot ribbon. Now, what this will do is basically add all of your data directly into a Power Pivot model. Now, with Excel, you're limited to the number of rows, but if you've actually connected to a different database or a different data source, you're no longer limited to the million row cap that's on Excel. And that's one of the awesome, powerful features of Power Pivot. 
with big data and everything else coming on board and the need for accountants to get the handle of big data, being able to connect to data sources with mil- of millions and millions of rows is absolutely brilliant by just using this additional tool on Excel. Now we have added that table in there, so I am going to go back. If we go to link tables, we can go back to our Excel table. Now I'm going to go to dispatch and I'm going to go to power pivot again and I'm going to add that to the data model. I'm going to go back to my Excel and I'm going to go to region and I'm going to go to power pivot and I'm going to add that to my data model. And then I'm going to go back to my Excel table again and now I'm going to add my overheads table and it's simple as just pressing add. Now these are linked tables so that means anything you do in the table in Excel is going to update here once we press update all. Let's head back in again and let's just add the other tables and the other table is a date table. And I'll explain the use of this date table to you now in a second. So I'm going to add this to the data model. So now we have all of our data loaded into our data model. We can see our different tables down here all loaded in. And we can also have a look at this by diagram view. So we have our sales, we have our dispatches, we have our employee region, we have our overheads, and we also have our date table. Now the reason I added a date table was because when you're using Power Pivot, you need to set up what's known as relationships. When you're setting up a relationship, you have to have a one-to-many relationship. That means that on one side of the relationship, that the particular field that is in common with both tables only lists that item once. Let's go back to our data view for a second. And we can see if we look at our sales table, the invoice, the dates, the 1st of January appears a couple of times. So that date is there many times. In dispatch, it's the same thing. The dates, the same date is there many times. Employee region doesn't have dates and overheads do have dates. But these have monthly dates and it is again many dates. So what we need is a table that will bridge these together and we can bridge these to that together by creating a date table where each date is only there once. Let's go back to my diagram view now and now we can set up a relationship between the dates by just dragging the date field to the date field. So I'm connecting my date fields together. Now we still have one table that is not connected and the table that's not connected is our employee table. I'm going to move it up here for better visibility. Move this one down so we can see the flow. Now the sales rep in this case is listed once whereas the sales rep in the sales table is listed many times. So again we have a one to many relationship. So now that we have all of these tables linked together, now we can just go ahead and we can start pivoting our, t- our data. So we can insert a pivot table on a new worksheet. And the blank table, the canvas looks exactly the same. But the difference is now over here in your pivot table fields, you have all of the tables of data available to you. So if we open up the date, you can see each column that was in the date table, the dispatch, each column that was in the dispatch table, the employee region, each table that was in the region, and the overheads, and as well, for the sales. Now what we could do is we could take the sales rep down here, and we could take the region over here, and we could take our net sales and put them into our values. And very quickly we have pivoted all of this data against each other. We quickly hop back now to our Power Pivot view and I want to show you some stuff here in the Power Pivot view. Now we can do calculations in here and the calculations are known as DAX calculations, data analysis expressions. 
but they're basically based on Excel functions. So if you know Excel functions, you're going to be able to get the hang of DAX very easily. The only difference between DAX and Excel is that these calculations work on columns rather than working on cell references. So they're columns or subsets of columns of data. Now we've seen earlier when we made the basic pivot table that we set up a calculated field. You don't need to set up calculated fields in Power Pivot because you can do calculations within the Power Pivot model. So let's just take the sum of the, we are in the sales table, and we want to take the sum of the net sales. This will now give us the net, the total net sales. Let's retitle this, make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see it. And I will format it while we're here so I don't have to format it while I'm in the pivot table. Now let's go over to dispatch for the moment and let's do exactly the same in dispatch. Let's sum the dispatch product cost and we will call this total cost of sales or just cost of sales. And now we can do our calculation to get our profit and that would be our total net sales minus our cost and we can then rename that to profit. Now let's insert a pivot table and we'll insert it on a new worksheet. And we have our calculations in and we have our net sales. So I'm going to take go to our sales and we're going to take our total net sales. I am going to go to our dispatches and I'm going to take my cost of sales. I'm just going to pop my values down this way so they're laid out and I'm going to put my profit in. Now what we didn't do in our standard pivot table and we didn't have the ability to add in our overheads. So I'm going to add our overheads amount in now. Now the thing with a pivot table created in Power Pivot is the first limitation we've already seen and we've removed the fact that you need to have all of the data in the one table. We've also looked there slightly at the granularity and by doing this we're able to bring in data from different granularities as well. But we also seen that if we try to copy and paste part of a pivot table that we weren't able to do it and we're still not able to do it until we go to our pivot table tools and in our pivot table tools if we go to OLAP tools and we say convert to formulas. Now that we have converted to formulas we can take all of these values and we can lay them out the way we want to lay them out. So we have our total sales, our cost of sales, which gives us our profit, and we can put our line under there. We can then take our overheads, place them here, which gives us our net profit, and we can add in our own calculations to the table. But the thing with this is, this is actually still connected to your data model. So now if you update your data model with new data, this is automatically going to update as well. So that's the second limitation of using basic pivot tables that's solved by using Power Pivot. So that's our first demonstration on the future of Excel and the use of Power Pivot. Now Power Pivot has an awful lot more features and you can do an awful lot more with it in terms of data modeling and analysis to what I've just shown you there. So that was just an introduction. Next week we're going to move on to the second demonstration and we're going to learn how you can quickly create a template that will allow you to combine files within a folder. This is a real VBA killer and once you do it once you'll have a template that you just need to update when you get a new file. And in our third demonstration then we're going to have a look at Power View for visualizations and analyzing your data, exploring your data further through visualizations. If you're watching this video on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And do head over to the blog, there's a link below the post because there's an awful lot more detail than what we covered in this video available in the blog post along with the second and third demonstrations of Excel Power Tools. Thanks for watching. Goodbye now.